also hard shit. <coughs> Alright, little kid waving. Robots like to wave too, but it's not because they're happy to see you, it's because they're retarded. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I thought. Anyways. Moving right along. So, this is uh, the concentration of PID. And P stands for proportion, I stands for integration, D stands for derivative. So, the proportion is how close you are to uh, to your targets, the proportion of that. The integral, if you take an integral like how far away you are, then that's a number. Uh, and then the derivative is, is how fast the distance to your target is changing. Um, and so what you do is you put a, you slap a constant on each of these and then you combine them for, for your target output speed. Um, and sometimes there's a dividing factor here. It's kind of like big O-ish notation, like the scaling of it doesn't matter. The only reasons A, B, and C matter is relative to each other. So you can't make them all 400 and have it be fucking magic. Um, I'm sorry, it's not how science works. Um, so this is the proportional term. Uh, so it goes, this is a horrendous graph. I'm really sorry, I couldn't find a better one. So the green line is the normal, and then the black is if you lower the proportional term, and then the red is if you raise the proportional term. And you can see that this actually, it doesn't, it doesn't and, you, and then the, the graphs represent like how close it is to the blue line. So over time you can see this actually levels out pretty quickly to its target, but it doesn't rise particularly fast. Um, and when you can, it is, hey, thank you. <laughs> uh, it doesn't rise particularly fast, so, um, like, compare it to like Ergo, which rises much faster as uh, as 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 the uh, as the term increases. So it rises slower. Um, sorry, it rises faster because red is more. God, this is an awful fucking. No, it rises faster. I can read. Um, <laughs> so uh, so it rises much faster with the integral term, but like it's going to continue to do like the itty bitty waves for longer. Uh, and then this is a derivative term, which rises wicked fucking slow, but stabilizes really fast. And so you're basically combining these to, uh, to get the arm to do approximately what you want to do, because in reality, the arm has mass and momentum. And you're like, go to specifically like this particular degree, the momentum will cause it to overshoot, and then it will go back, and then it will go forward, and then it will go back. And like that's why robots wave at you. They're just like. <laughs> so uh, these are ways that you slow down the robot so that it stops twitching on you. The other thing you can do, which is really derp, is what your thermostat does. It's just a dead band, which is the oh fuck it close enough band. Um, and if you are lazy, that's a great way to start debugging. Um, the upside of doing shit like this is uh, is if you load up the arm without any code at all, it will resist the load and continue to try to be in that position. So you can lean on it, you can push on it, and the robot will actually gear up the motors to resist you without you writing code, which is awesome. Um, but it's also the ending of the robot resistance, so beware. Um, <laughs> all right, this is a magic fucking table from Wikipedia, so don't remember anything I said if you're really hungover. And look at this table on Wikipedia for pig controllers, and if your shit isn't doing it, increase the term that relates to the problem you're having. Um, because science is complicated, it's half o'clock in the morning, and here we are. Um, so, velocity control. Uh, so, the integral doesn't really work when you're trying to set a target velocity, so just fucking drop it, set it to zero, and then you can use the P and the D. Thank you, someone, I appreciate you. We're gonna get a lot of it. This is straight vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. At least I had a mixer last year. Alright. So uh, set the I target to zero and then uh, and then just set your velocity. And this is like an okay way to set velocity. Um you're gonna need a feedback loop, so put like maybe encoders on your wheels. Um I don't want to go too much into stuff from last year because I know that some people saw the talk from last year, but the slides are all online if you search my name and the word DEF CON. Um, ah, this is a cute, adorable photo of a, of a goon's son fixing a Netgear router. Um, this is our, our puppy photo, just as we transition. 
Servo. Servos are limited to just one rotation. But servos have a lot of software actually already in them. Um, so like you just set a position between 0 and 255 and it just goes. It's fucking magic. There's some like physics behind it. Um, there's some applications like they aren't just interchangeable for motors. Um, but they're pretty cool. Uh, and programming servos is wicked simple. Pneumatics are cool. They use air, obviously. They're open air system, and uh, and you can't really stop the, the pneumatic shaft halfway. Like you can spend a lot of money, and they have special ones with like magnetic positions that are between open and closed. But like you and me and mere mortals, like pneumatics are up or they're down, and that's just how they are. Um, you need a pump on there, or you need a big reserve tank. And if you run out of reserve tank, then that's sorry guys. Uh, then that's, uh, then that, then your pneumatics don't work anymore. And, uh, if you decide to put a pump on there, then you get really round, and, uh, and your battery life goes in the toilet. Um, consider that. Um, hydraulics are so fucking messy when you break down. So, have fun. Um, but the good thing about it is an inch of non-compressible fluid equals an inch of movement, and you have much more granular control. Um, and it is a closed system. You can't just pump it out in the air and then pull more in and expect it. You're going to carry the entirety of your hydraulic fluid with you the entirety of your whatever the hell you're doing. Uh, ah, this is Casey's crotch. Uh, so, cool trick. Uh, not involving Casey's crotch. Uh, <laughs> cool trick is, uh, is, so let's say that you're debugging an infrared circuit and your light doesn't work. I don't fucking know. Uh, and you can really smash your head against the wall with this. Um, most camera phones don't have a good IR filter on them because they're not like, yeah, with like the sunglasses. Um, so, you can hold up the circuit that when you think it should be lit with your camera phone and see if the circuit is blinking. Um, and this is like, a, I mean, most of us carry camera phones in our pockets. This is a really easy way to debug an infrared circuit before, like, you know, my sensors aren't working and, like, is the thing even lighting up? Um, check that your camera phone is shit and doesn't have an IR filter before you get angry. <laughs> um, a great way to do this is I tested this last night is those little um, thrifty keyboards on that on that TV thing in the Rio hotel rooms. Those work on infrared. TV remotes work on infrared. All kinds of shit works on infrared. You can just put the put the um, put an LED into you know into a, a bench power supply resistor and just light that shit up. But um, but do check because camera phones are getting better and better and better and better and they're starting to use IR filters and I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. So um, <laughs> so cool debugging trick. This is a polar bear! He's so cute! Ah, oh, that was Ah! Uh, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> That's still straight vodka. Corrections from last year! This is some shit I did wrong. Reddit bolts! How do they work? <laughs> wrong! Okay? This, you're just gonna rip the head off the bolt or rip the, um, Oh my god, I forgot this word last year too. What's the word always? Bridge! Yeah! Alright! <laughs> oh, you broke your bolt! That would suck! Don't do that! This is a machine that does nothing but bend bolts! <laughs> Don't do this either! This is sometimes actually okay if you go out and buy expensive special bolts that are made for sheer load. They do make them. Thank you to all you lovely people who sent me angry emails. Now I've corrected it. Awesome. This is still the right way in general. If you're actually not um, relying on the bolts for the holding force, but instead holding two pieces of metal together and relying on the static friction to be your primary holding force. Because bolts are zinc-plated shits. Um, and you don't want to rely on them. For our linkages, these things are pimp. Um, so let's imagine that like you just can't mount a big ass pneumatic on the front where it's gonna run into everybody, but you need things to go up and around and back. So what you can actually do is imagine you're either driving the orange linkage or you put a motor on the orange bolt and you're actually getting a very complicated uh, motion out of that little red ball on the top that normally wouldn't be possible without a lot of fucking effort. 
Uh, does everyone understand this slide? Yes. Yay! <laughs> so if you wanted to make a motion like this, you would be like, holy balls, I need two motors with two dimensions and a lot of code to make sure it never goes out of these things because I want my little red thing on the top to go exactly this track and I go, wrong, bitches! <laughs> Check that shit out! Four <laughs> 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 our linkages are amazing! Like steampunk kids shit themselves over this! <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 